Hello and welcome to Sunset TV. I'm Tina Jha. You're watching The Global Debate, the show where we get you a world perspective on issues of global significance. Today, we are going to delve into a subject that impacts each one of us and the solution to which also lies with us humans, and that is climate change. Searing heat waves, devastating floods, raging fires. Extreme weather events have been regularly impacting the world in recent months. Intense and widespread, they are a stark reminder of the potential chaos of climate change. Disastrous consequences await us if in the next 20 years, the world does not drastically cut greenhouse gas emissions. In its latest health check of the Earth's climate, the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel says global warming is spiraling out of control. Its report, Code Red for Humanity, says that rising temperatures are altering our world for the worse. The comprehensive study, the first since 2013, draws on more than 14,000 published papers by over 200 scientists to say that the Earth's global surface temperature rose around 1.1 degrees Celsius compared with the average in 1850-1900. In just the first two decades of the 21st century, average global surface temperature was 0.99 degrees Celsius higher than the pre-industrial levels. It was 1.09 degrees higher than the historic base period in 2011 to 2020, indicating faster global warming. Temperatures reported in this decade were last observed 6,500 years ago in the middle Holocene period that was warmer than present day. The past five years, 2015 to 2020, have been warmer than any year for which records exist. And as it goes, 2021 is turning out to be one of the seven hottest years on record. The impact of global warming is being felt everywhere. The Earth's frozen landmass is melting fast. Sea ice cover in the Arctic is lesser in the past decade than in at least 1,000 years. Retreat of global glaciers is unparalleled in at least 2,000 years. Oceans are heating up at a rate not seen since the end of the most recent ice age around 11,000 years ago. Sea levels are rising at triple the pace compared to 1901-1971. The warm atmosphere has triggered fundamental changes in climate patterns worldwide. Hot extremes like heat waves are more frequent and more intense since the 1950s, like the recent ones in Canada, Greece, Australia and Russia, and extreme droughts have affected various parts of the globe. The question now is, is the world doing anything to save the planet? In 2015, almost every nation signed the Paris Climate Agreement to limit global warming to well below 2 degrees Celsius, preferably to 1.5 degrees Celsius compared to pre-industrial levels. In the last few years, some progress has been made to achieve it. Dozens of nations outlined or proposed net zero carbon emission targets for themselves, but the ambitious 1.5 degrees Celsius target seems beyond reach, unless there are immediate rapid and large-scale reductions in greenhouse gas emissions. In the next 20 years, global warming, the average temperature at the Earth's surface over a period of 20 years, is expected to reach or exceed 1.5 degrees Celsius above the late 1800s. However, if we rapidly reduce greenhouse gas emissions, if we can reach global net zero CO2 emissions around 2050. It is extremely likely that we can keep global warming well below two degrees. For governments the world over, the findings should be the final wake-up call to act and act fast. 
the future of our planet rests on the choices that humanity makes today. And to discuss in detail the important findings of the report, I have with me three distinguished panelists. Joining me on the program are Professor Sergey Gulev, P.P. Shirshov Institute of Oceanology, Russian Academy of Sciences. He is one of the drafting authors of the IPCC report. I also have with me Professor Govind Sami Bala, Center for Atmospheric and Oceanic Sciences, Indian Institute of Science, Bengaluru. He's also a leading author and a contributing author of the UN-backed climate report. And Dr. Abhishek Savita, researcher at Geomar Helmholtz Center for Ocean Research in Germany. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on Sunset TV. Professor Gulev, let me initiate the discussion with you. So the findings of the IPCC report are extremely concerning. And wherein the scientists, which include you, you point out that the impact of global warming is being witnessed everywhere. We are witnessing extreme weather events. Is this an indication that we now stand dangerously close to a tipping point? Let me first uh, very briefly summarize, actually, the key findings of this report with respect to what we had before, actually, in IR5 and IR4, and even in earlier reports. In IR5, we definitely, with uh, nearly 100% probability, stated that global warming is an established fact, or global warming is unequivocal. Importance of IR6 is that we say now, with the same level of confidence, that this is a human impact, what resulted in, first of all, emissions of uh, greenhouse gases, what resulted into the in the global warming. So that we say this with the same level of confidence, with the same level of likelihood. The second thing is that uh, in this report, we precisely estimated the whole uh, energetic balance actually of climate system, and we stated that uh, we know now quantitatively with a very high accuracy, actually, this Earth's energy imbalance. And we know also that Earth's energy imbalance, which is around one watt per square meter, largely by 92, 93 uh, percent, okay, not to go to these decimal points, is accumulated by the ocean. And the fact that global warming is ocean warming and ocean continues to increase its uh, heat content at its sea level, even if atmosphere makes a short term several years hiatus in the global warming. The third thing, which is critically important, that we say with very high confidence, not is an established fact, which is very close to 100% probability, but that uh, this 1.1 degree centigrade increase of global temperature this is important, but what is equally important is that this warming actually puts the global climate system on a, in a state when the system becomes less and less stable, and we experience already and will experience in the future uh, increasing of uh, magnitude and uh, occurrence of extreme weather events of extreme droughts, extreme precipitation, extreme flooding, mm -hmm. and uh, other extreme events. This is also important, and these events, they affect nearly all regions in the world. Professor Bala, uh, one of the major concerns that has been highlighted in the IPCC report is, for the first time, we have seen that over 200 scientists have made an unambiguous statement regarding the role of humans, which says it's the human activity that is largely to blame. Now, obviously, this was a known fact, but now it's become a statement of fact by scientists of so many countries. But in the coming times, what are the immediate measures that the IBCC suggests in its report the world must take to reduce this rapid warming of the planet? Yeah, I think first thing, uh, you know, it's the time, you know, because... Uh, since the AR5 report, like almost as eight years have passed. So uh, I think what I really wanted to, you know, look at in the report is basically, you know, it talks about the unprecedented nature of this, you know, things that are unfolding in front of us. I think that is one. And also the, you know, the speed with which this climate change is uh, proceeding. And uh, the next important thing is 
you know, climate change, you know, it's not going to be like, let's say if you're, the planet warms by one degree, you know, you're not going to warm every day one degree or something like that. So it, it, the manifestation of climate change is going to be in the form of extremes, right? So that is, in fact, one of the major highlights in this, that is, you know, extremes are intensifying and you are seeing actually really unprecedented, uh, you know, events, you know, like on a daily basis or something like that, not, you know, daily rainfall or daily uh, heat waves. Um, so that is another, you know, one of the major uh, highlights in this uh, report. This is possible, you know, because of, you know, some scientific uh, developments, like, for example, uh, I would just name a technical jargon that is basically what is called the event attribution. You know, there are today uh, techniques and calculation which can actually tell you um, what percentage of this particular event is actually caused by climate change. So, uh, so mainly, I think I would say, you know, the extreme events and uh, uh, it's not happening only, you know, in some locations, but it is right now being observed all around the planet and it is intensifying. I think that is what is, uh, you know, somehow, I think you probably already know, you know, in the past two or three years, uh, we are witnessing a really unprecedented uh, events, you know, for example, simple things like, you know, fire uh, in the U.S., uh, you know, U.S. West Coast. Um, so, in fact, people are wondering whether, uh, you know, they, they have we crossed some kind of threshold for, uh, you know, tri you know, extreme thresholds for, uh, you know, crossing, you know, so that, you know, these fires are really very intense, right? Um, so, you know, that is uh, about the present uh, climate. As far as the future is concerned, I think, you know, what I am really worried is, um, you know, the climate change effects, they are actually directly, they correlate with the magnitude of global warming. So if the magnitude of global warming doubles, you know, you are actually going to see a doubling of these uh, impacts. So that is another very important message that has uh, come out of this. Dr. Savita, let me get in a word from you on the sea level projections in the IPCC report. This report clearly shows that the climate change is here. And we now we see each and everywhere in the globe, we, the climate is changing as the consequences of the, the human. We are responsible for this change without any doubt. So, and this report, it also shows that, shows that the the changes we had is rapid in, in for example, in, in, in the extreme in the temperature, rainfall amounts, extremes, and also rapid melting rate in, in, in the glaciers and also the sea ice and ice sheets, and which is not seen in, in the last couple of decades or in the history for long for back 1,000 years. And this report is also not just quantifying the number, but also giving the cause for these changes, as like the culprit is the greenhouse gases. So, so, so uh, these, these, these changes are because of the greenhouse gases we air in the atmosphere. And that comes from the action we pursue on, 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 on the Earth. So because of this global warming 1.1 is all from the human cause, the, the, the fossil fuel. And that consequences a lot of the extreme events. And for example, is, is, is the sea level rise. In, in the last decade, the sea level rise is 3.7 millimeter per year. And if you go back from that decade, from 1970 to 2006, it's 1.9. It's double of that. And also, in addition to that, we also have extremes in, in the flood. And, 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 and the good example which I can talk about is the, the flood in the Europe, in the Germany, it, we had in last month, and also a uh, wild uh, fires in the Australia and the America. And, and, and in the future, if we are not going to cut these emission net to zero, we are going to face more worse situation than the one we had at, at the moment. And, and one of the, like, again, the, the, these extremes are going to more intense and more frequent. And, and, and that, that intense and more frequent, and, and for example, for, uh, for our country in India, is more more drastic because our population, most of the around, around more than 28 million pupils live in the coastline. And that is very savory for the, the increasing sea level change in, in, in the future. So I think it is, it is one of the, the biggest issue and also not in terms of the population, uh, approximate more than 4 trillion worth, more trillion USA dollars 
work it, it, we have at the moment in the coastline. So in terms of the really to save for the better economy for the country development, we need to prepare ahead for these consequences we have at the moment. So 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 these are the extreme events, it's not in the present. So like if we also limit the, the carbon dioxide for net zero is not going to stop. It's, it's, it's the, the global warming is below 1.5 in the mid of the, the, the century. And, and, and if we still keep going with the net zero, then, then it is going to be declined. Certainly, so, a 1.1 degree centigrade increase, and we are seeing disastrous consequences worldwide. One and a half degree centigrade, the moment we breach that, the report talks about, the panelists are suggesting the consequences could be far worse than what we are witnessing today. Professor Bala, what does the IPCC report say about India? How worried should we be? I think, you know, you rightly put it. Uh, you know, as I just already said, uh, you know, in, ma in, in uh, scientific language, we say that the impacts scale with the magnitude of global warming, which means, you know, the more the global warming is, more the size of, let's say, you know, the, either the intensity or the frequency of uh, heat waves um, are, you know, now the IPCC report, there is something, you know, new this time that is, you know, uh, what is called compound extreme events that that is basically two or multiple extreme events happening at the same time so as far as india is concerned you know what are we what should we be worried about right number one it's a heat waves right you know india is prone to uh, heat waves uh, before the monsoon season that is the pre monsoon season sometime in uh, april may june and india has a vast uh, coastal area so we should be worried about uh, sea level rise and we also have very intense uh, hydrological cycle during the monsoon season. So we could actually see, um, you know, uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, intense rainfall events. In association with that, you are going to see floods, right? So also, you know, in fact, interestingly, although, you know, the wet events are increasing, you also see dry events are also increasing, which means, um, you know, if there is a drought, the intensity of the drought will be also, you know, uh, getting stronger. So these are the major, uh, I would say, you know, uh, impacts that could uh, affect India. You know, mainly I, my concern, you know, because we are located in tropical, kind of tropical area, we already, you know, suffer from extreme heat. So, you know, I can't imagine, think about it, if you do nothing, even the global mean warming will be another four degrees or something like that. Dr. Savita, you also spoke about how reducing emissions is the best possible way to reduce global warming. If you speak about India specifically, where do we stand in terms of reducing emissions? So I think this problem is not a single country problem. It's a global problem. And, and if we all countries need to come together to reduce, reduce these emissions. And this, the best way to reduce these emissions, like the greenhouse gases, is to convert from the fossil fuels fuels to renewable energy and such as the use the wind driving energy or the solar panel by using the net, net techno the new technology so if that not only just the uh, the, the the reduce the, the global warming but also help to to uh, to for the, for the to adopt the new technology and, and the other alternative source for the energy and, and by reducing that not only we reduce the global uh, warming and also we also control the, uh, the, the, the these extreme events. And one of the examples like uh, the, the Professor Bala was talking about, the, the, the extreme event. So these extreme events is also like the happening, the, the, not just only in, in, in the coast, but also like the, like the country India is mostly dependent on, on the monsoon. So the, these extreme events like the, when, 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 when warming is happening, most of the warming, the anthropogenic one, I will say, is mostly uptaking or, or storing in the ocean. And, and when, when ocean take a lot of feet, it has various consequences. And one of the consequences is, is, is the thermal expansion. When you add heat into the ocean, it expands. And expand means you rise the sea level. Sea level. And, and another example is that the monsoon in, in India, is mostly we have uh, like seasonal monsoon. And that mostly exists because we have a uh, land and ocean contrast. So when we are warming the ocean, we are actually reducing that land and ocean temperature contrast. 
and that actually consequences as the changing in, in, in the movement of the uh, movement of the monsoon that the progression so that further uh, affect the, the the monsoon and 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 the country like india which economy is depend on um, on the agriculture actually it is really very important to take some actions i really like in this report is not given like what action should be to it but i think the best way to reduce this this, this uh, global warming is to 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 just shift from fossil fuels to renewable energy yeah okay professor gulev since we're only about 2 months away from the first major international convention on climate change of this year that's cop26 what are your expectations what can we expect from the developed as well as the developing countries to do when it comes to tackling climate crisis the situation is such that uh, requires immediate actions uh, the other things that what will be discussed during cop26 is not only uh, just the technologies or obligations which uh, different countries may undertake actually to reduce greenhouse gas emissions uh, but this should be properly put into the context of precise estimation of the role of natural systems and uh, one my colleague mentioned already ocean and coastal areas in this respect which are able to do pretty much the same job actually in reducing and storing uh, greenhouse gases co2 first of all uh, but of course uh, the future we are here actually for the next decades for dif definitely this will be very different for different countries depends on the economy depends on the role uh, which uh, carbon plays in this economy and so forth so first but i think the actions in different countries will be different but in each country this will be an accurate mixture of actions of developing of green technologies but also uh, as first thing second thing is a storing of co2 just developing technologies for storing co2 and the third is developing technologies which provide the option for sequestering co2 using natural systems for instance using specific types of agriculture practices specific types of uh, managing forests specific types of managing uh, aquaculture and uh, i think this is well developed in india as well so that uh, but definitely uh, whatever we are doing what they put say says uh, we are not able very likely we are not able actually to be within this 1.5 degree with either scenario but we are likely able to be within 2.0 degrees with at least uh, more or less a case scenarios in which we start to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and uh, this is a target and date if we don't get to the target 1.5 at least to be within target 2.0 which still makes puts us on risk of this uh, widespread uh, extreme events but uh, nevertheless i hope uh, makes uh, the world system more or less okay, manageable with respect to observed and future climate change. Absolutely. And what's more important is that we leave behind a more sustainable planet for our future generations. And for this, what the scientists are suggesting, what our panelists have said, in fact, they've given out a call for action to countries worldwide. It's a wake-up call for the world to come together and act, act fast, to tackle this climate crisis that we are reeling under so with that i'll have to call it a wrap on this edition of the global debate thanks once again to all my guests for joining me on the program and sharing their thoughts with us and our viewers as well so that's it from us on this edition of the global debate thanks very much for your time